Hello there and welcome to the June 2019 paper here on paper 2 and we're looking at question 6. So figure 4 shows a sketch of the graph y equals g of x where g of x is equal to so it's equal to two different functions for a, a different portion of its graph. So for the values of x below 2 so it looks like this here is the point 2 for that value it's x minus 2 squared plus 1 and then for above 2 it's 4x minus 7 and it looks like the intersection of that point there if we plug in 2 to both of them we give us 1 on the top and 1 on the bottom so it looks like it's touching the x-axis here but actually it's not its minimum point here is at 1 so it's at 2 um, at 2 1 for its minimum point so first thing we're asked to do is find the and evaluate g g of 0 so remember for functions here, what we have to do first is we have to put 0 into the first g. Now I have to select the correct part of the function to use here. If g, if x is 0, then I'm going to use the top equation here to work out what uh, the evaluation of g of 0 is. So put 0 into the top one of these. I'm going to get 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Square that, I get 4. Plus 1, I get 5. So the first input of 0 gives me 5. And now I'm going to put 5 into the g function. And 5 is greater than 2. So I'm going to put 5 into the bottom one of these functions now. So that's 20 minus 7 is 13. So the answer to part A is 13. Find all values of x for which g of x is greater than 28. So effectively, if I draw the line for y equals 28, it's going to happen at two points. It's going to happen at this point here and upwards, and it's going to happen at this point here and upwards. So I need to do two equations on this, one for the right-hand side, one for the left-hand side. I'll do the left-hand side first. So it's going to be x minus 2 squared plus 1 equals 28. Take away 1 from both sides, I'll get x minus 2 squared equals 27. Now square root both sides, and it's going to be x minus 2 equals plus or minus root 27, and then add the 2 to the other side, and I'm going to get 2 plus or minus. I could simplify root 27 to 3 root 3. Now I'm looking for the negative solution here because if you imagine the full curve would be a whole quadratic but it's just the left hand solution I'm looking for so it's going to be x equals 2 minus 3 root 2 is my left hand solution. Now I'll go for the right hand solution and that's going to be 4x minus 7 equals 28. I'm only looking for the intersections here then I'll sort out the inequalities after. So I'll add the 7 onto the other side, and I'll get 35. And then 35 divided by 4 is, well, just 35 divided by 4. So this point here is 35 divided by 4, and this point here is 2 minus 3 root 2. So the answer for when g of x is greater than 28 is when x is less than 2 minus 3 root 2 and x is bigger than 35 over 4. So there we are, that's the answer for part b. But there's a c and a d to this question as well, so let's now move on to that one. The function h of x is defined by h of x equals um, 2 minus, so x minus 2 squared plus 1 um, for x is less than 2, less than or equal to 2. So the question is, explain why h has an inverse but g does not. So the function h is just the left-hand part of this graph here. So it's just that part of the graph. So because this, because, um, because h is a one-to-one -one function, it has an inverse. as an inverse, which is 1 to 1, which is 1 to 1. 
but the g of x graph is a one two so it's a it's a many to one function because two x inputs could give you potentially the same y output but as g of x is a one so it is a many to one function which is fine a many to one function is a function um, we'll have an inverse which is one to many this is not defined as a function not defined as a function. So just a reminder, the two types of functions you're allowed to have is a one-to-many and a one-to-one. -one. Um, so it is a, is a many-to-one and a one-to-one. -one. As long as the output is only to one answer, uh, that is defined as a function, but a one-to-many function is not defined as a function. Uh, because if you put two into a function, you should only expect to have one output. But a one-to-many function says that if you put um, if you put uh, two into the function, you would expect to get many answers out, uh, which doesn't work. So, so that's not defined as a function. So that's the answer to part C. And part D is solve the equation h inverse of x equals minus a half. Well, this looks like a difficult question. But actually, it's not really. Um, if you work it out in a very difficult way, it might be. But actually, it's not. So h, of x, h inverse of x equals minus a half. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to be sneaky. And I'm going to apply the function h to both sides. So apply the function h and apply the function h. Now h, h inverse will just lead us back to x. And then I can do h of minus a half. And all I now need to do is put minus a half into the h function to work out what x is, because that's the aim of this question, work out what x is. So putting a half into the function will be minus a half minus 2 squared plus 1. So that's going to be two and a half, that's five over two, so it's going to be 25 over four, plus four over four for the one on the end there, so that's going to be x equals 29 over four. And there we are, that's the answer for this question here, 29 over four. And we've done it the very sneaky way of applying the function h to both sides. Let me explain this another way. If we've got our normal function h, it takes the input to the output, but our h inverse function takes our output back to the input. So then if my um, so then if I'm starting here, this is my input to my inverse function. I want to work out what the answer is when x is minus a half. What I could just do effectively is put minus a half into the original function and take it back to my output. Um, which is which is effectively what I've now worked out here. So there we are. So there we are. Hopefully that's a little bit of an explanation as to why you can just work out what h of minus a half is, and the answer is 29 over 4. So there we are. That's the answer to question 6. Let's now move on to question 7.